Hi everyone. Hi, hello. Welcome to the library. I'm Kenna. It's great to see you guys again after so long. <laughs> um, quick recap where I've been the past year, year and a half, two years, I've really struggled with my um, mental health. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say on the topic um, right now. Maybe later I'll make a video um, kind of talking about like what I struggle with and um, how I cope for, you know, information, um, kind of spreading awareness about mental health, blah, blah, blah. Um, but today we're going to talk about books. As the title said, let's go ahead and just jump on, jump into what I read in August. And um, I might do some sort of like earlier 2020 wrap up, kind of, you know, what I've read before this point, or I'll do the that book freak out mid-year tag thing. <laughs> um, I know it's not the halfway point of the year, the mid, the mid-year, it's not the mid-year anymore, but um, yeah, I might give like a little summary, um, in another video of what I have read, um, in the first portion of 2020. So, in August. August was my best reading month this year. Um, not to say that the other months were bad. 2020 has actually been my best reading year, um, in a while. I, um, I'm well over halfway through with my reading goal, which is great because I haven't completed a reading goal on Goodreads since 2014. We'll go ahead and dive right in to the biggest chunk of the month. Here they are. Aren't they beautiful? This is the Throne of Glass series. Um, it's actually only half of the series. I read Throne of Glass back in May and I decided to go ahead and continue on with the series. So in August I read Red Crown of Midnight which is the second installment. They say Throne of Glass novels but they're really part of the series so they're not really novels. Queen of Shadows which is the third one and Air of Fire, which is the fourth one, and I am currently on Empire of Storms, which is the fifth one. I'm also reading um, Assassin's Blade, which is like the precursory like collection of stories um, that starts before Throne of Glass. So I'll just hold up Throne of Glass while I talk about it. But if you don't know what this series is about, it is about an assassin who I think she's. 17 or 18 um she's like the best assassin in her country in this kingdom um this is a YA epic fantasy so it takes place in a completely different world than ours there's a complete like complex magic system um or there's not because as you find out when you read it um the king who is in control right now um when the book opens he has banished all magic um so you kind of follow along with selena as she goes through this um competition to become that king's champion um yeah and as epic fantasies do you start adding on more characters as the books go and you just follow along with all these people and you really fall in love <laughs> and i really really enjoyed this this one in particular was really bad um you can tell this was the first novel i felt like it was very surface level um there was really no depth to the plot there was no depth to the characters i almost put the series down because i was like this is just really kind of boring I felt like nothing really happened in this one um you never got to see selena like actually be the badass assassin that she was portrayed as. You just got to hear her talk about how badass she was. Um, but I made the great choice of picking up the second one, hoping that the series got better, and it did. Um, the series, like, book, as the books go on, you can tell Sarah J. Moss um, really became the author that she is. Um, you can see her develop. You can see her writing get better. Um, there are still things that I have um like 
problems with, characters I don't necessarily like, um, things I don't agree with. Um, maybe I'll do like a series wrap up when I finish the entire series and kind of just give my overview of all those little things that I have problems with and all the little things that I really love about the series. So as it stands right now, I think I've given every book um, a three or a four star. Um, I haven't given any of them less than a three and I don't think I've given any of them five stars. So pretty solid YA fantasy. The next book I read was The, the Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kerr. Um, it was Indian Independence Day, um, August 15th, I believe. Um, there was actually a Read Indiathon hosted, but unfortunately I couldn't participate um, in that readathon. And one of the main points in that readathon was to celebrate Indian Independence Day. So um, I wanted to pick up one thing by an Indian author. Um, and this was honestly the only thing on my shelf. I gave this four stars. Um, it was solid. Um, I like her writing. I got mustard on it, if you can see. Um, I thought the, I thought Milk and Honey was better because I felt like it was more, um, influential. I felt like The Sun and Her Flowers, um, kind of rode on the coattails of Milk and Honey a little bit. Um, I would like to see something new from her next. I don't doubt that Rupi Kerr's voice is very powerful in her writings. Um, I think her illustrations are brilliant. I would buy a book just of her illustrations. I think they're so good. But I just feel like in her next book, which she actually just finished the manuscript for, um, I would like to see something new from her um, that's not in the format of Milk and Honey or The Sun and Her Flowers. Next, I read Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This book didn't do it for me. I read Gone Girl for part of the Scallywagathon hosted by Hardback Quarter. I didn't end up getting to finish um, the Scallywagathon and complete all the books that I wanted to, but I tried and that's what counts, right? Um, but I read this book for one of the challenges and um, yeah, this was another one that just kind of like fell flat for me. Um, I gave it three stars. I think Gillian Flynn writes really great books, but this just kind of like, it was a bit too much. Like I was just kind of ready for it to end. And honestly, nothing will ever compare to Sharp, sharp Objects. I've read all three of her books now and I just don't think anything can compare to Sharp Objects. Um, I kind of felt the same way about Dark Places as I did Gone Girl. I just don't think they can compare. They kind of fall a little flat. There's just, I feel like there's just something missing in them that Sharp Objects gave us. And I can't really tell you what that is, but I don't know. I just, Sharp Objects was great and this wasn't and honestly I think Sharp Objects deserved the hype that this one got because um I just I didn't I didn't really like it I mean it was okay I'm glad I read it for like popularity's sake so I could have an input if you know people ask me in my opinion or if someone wants to talk about it I can be like hey if you really enjoyed Gone Girl you might enjoy Sharp Objects even more because that's how I am and I will point them towards Sharp Objects because that is the best book. If you haven't read Sharp Objects, read it. I read Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. Um, and I also read, she is right here, um, Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant. I also read these for the Sky Wagathon. Um, I'm going to be posting a review on them pretty soon um, because... I've got some things to say. <laughs> this book really got hype um, on booktube not too long ago and I, I'm not here for it. Um, I'm not going to say anything else because I'm going to post a review so if you want to hear my thoughts um, on this and Rolling in the Deep, please go watch that video. I'll be posting it in the next day or so. Um, Basically, I gave this one two stars. I gave Rolling in the Deep four stars. So if you want to find out why, if you want to find out what they're about, go watch my review. I'm going to post a spoiler-free and a spoiler-full review. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that sums up kind of what I read in August. Um, I technically finished Into the Drowning Deep like September 2nd, so oops. But yeah, all in all, I read seven books. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Um, tell me what you read in August. I want to know. Let me know what your favorite books in August were. Let me know what your least favorite books in August were. Um, let me know if you agree about Gone Girl and Sharp Objects. Because I need to know the consensus on what Gillian Flynn's best book is and why it's Sharp Objects. So, <laughs> um, with that being said, have a great day. Um, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.